Hi guys, I'm Brittany. If you are the parent of a toddler and you're about to go on an airplane with them soon, I am going to share some of my ninja tips and tricks for getting them to sleep on the airplane. As you probably already know, as a parent, there is no silver bullet when it comes to babies and toddlers and sleeping. However, there are some things you can do to greatly increase the likelihood that your toddler is gonna fall asleep on the plane. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today in this video. If you don't know me already, my name is Brittany and this is my YouTube channel all about family travel and adventures if this video is helping you out, please remember to like it down below. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna break up this video into three different sections. The preparation stage, the airport stage, and then on the airplane itself. And I'm gonna put my camera down so my arms don't fall off. In the days, in the weeks leading up to your flight even, there are certain elements that you put into place that are gonna matter in terms of whether or not your toddler falls asleep on the plane, believe it or not. One of those things is the seats that you're choosing. So are you gonna be sitting by the aisle or the window? For me personally, a window seat is much better for getting my toddler to sleep. It tends to be a little quieter and a little bit darker. If you're sitting in the aisle with a toddler and somebody interrupts you to get up and go to the bathroom, it just doesn't work, at least for my son. I'll also, if you're gonna be using any sort of toddler beds, like toddler uh, seat extenders or inflatable footrests, these can only be used in the window seat and the middle seat. You can't use them in the aisle seat, so that's something to keep in mind as well. If you've never heard of a toddler airplane bed before, these are actually pretty cool and they come in all kinds of different sizes and price points. I actually am sharing my research with everybody that I've done on this. I have a big spreadsheet full of the most popular toddler airplane beds, how much they cost, and all of the different features they have. Plus in that same spreadsheet, I also included all of my information on travel strollers, travel car seats, and travel baby beds. So I would definitely recommend checking that out. I will try to remember to put a link in the description down below. Of course, in terms of sleep, you're going to want to consider whether or not your toddler is going to be a lap infant. If they're under two years old, like my son, they could still sleep or sit on your lap as a lap infant. My toddler does still sleep on my lap. He's almost two years old, but he will fall asleep on my lap on the airplane in certain such in certain conditions if I get all of these things right that I'm talking about in this video but if you know that your toddler sleeps better in the car seat it might be a good idea for you to consider purchasing them their own seat and bringing your car seat on board the airline on board the airplane for them to be able to sleep in their car seat another pre-flight item to consider is what time is your flight are you scheduling it during your toddler's normal nap time are you scheduling it um, at night is it a red-eye flight of course if you're scheduling it during their normal sleep time they'll probably be more likely to sleep. You are gonna wanna make sure to dress them for comfort. Make sure you're bringing their pajamas on the plane and backup pajamas and also guarantee that they're nice and warm. Sometimes the cabins on the airplanes can be pretty cold. I'm gonna talk about what to pack for your toddler but honestly, one of the most important things for you to be able to do is to get yourself in the right headspace. Your attitude is gonna be everything. You wanna imagine the worst case scenario if your toddler doesn't fall asleep, doesn't skips a nap, whatever it might be with imagine the worst case scenario how they're going to react imagine how you're going to react to their reaction to not sleeping just picture the very worst thing that can happen and accept that and then remember that you are never going to see these people ever again that you are on the airplane with pack all of your baby's normal sleep cue items so all of their pacifiers blanky binky comfort stuffed animal whatever it might be for my son if we have his binky his blanky and his milk he knows it's time for bed he's already in that mood we have an infinitely higher chance of getting him to sleep if we have his comfort items with us. We always do all of the normal bedtime routine stuff that we do at home with our toddler and one of the things that works really well is to use a toddler bedtime story from YouTube. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about but one day I just typed in toddler bedtime stories into YouTube and there's all these like really quiet story videos that my son just loves and they put him into the, this really dreamy state. And then after that, we can read him books. And it's just like this long process of him getting really sleepy that starts with a sleepy YouTube, like five or 10 minute video. So if you don't, if you haven't tried those, check them out. Another mom friend recommended something called Lava, which I believe is a Disney short on Disney Plus. I haven't tried this, but I think it's kind of the same sort of thing, like a short sleepy video that you can show your toddler. So other items you might wanna pack depending on your child are books, a portable 
portable sound machine, a wrap or a carrier to carry them around a little bit up and down the aisles so they get sleepy, some sort of toddler bed setup like an inflatable footrest or one of those inflatable seat extenders for the airplane, milk, maybe even a little pillow for them. A surprising part of this preparation stage that's maybe gonna sound a little bit silly is to talk to your toddler about the trip even if you feel like your toddler is not understanding anything at all or is not going to understand, tell them about it in the days or maybe even the weeks leading up to your trip. Talk to them about what to expect, what they can expect to happen when you're at the airport. Walk them through what's gonna happen at check-in, what's gonna happen at security. Oh, we're gonna go watch the airplanes, we're gonna sit on the airplane, we're gonna sleep on the airplane. Chances are you're gonna be a little bit stressed out or maybe a lot of bit stressed out on your travel day. So it's good for your toddler to hear all of these words and expressions coming out of your mouth in a time when you're feeling nice and relaxed and calm. It may sound really silly, but I started doing this with my son when he was maybe around a year old, just preparing him verbally for what we were about to go through. And even if your toddler doesn't stand, doesn't understand a word of what you're saying, it will somehow calm you down. It will make you feel calmer to talk through these things with your baby so that it doesn't feel like a total surprise for both of you. You've actually sort of gone through a little bit of preparation in discussing these things together. Finally, as far as the preparation stage, is to take care of yourself, parent. Meaning, it's okay to pack mini energy drinks for yourself. Order coffees while you're at the airport. Drink plenty of water in the days leading up to your trip. And this is hilarious to say, I know, but try to get as much sleep as you possibly can in the days leading up to your trip because you are gonna need to be on energy-wise. Hopefully you're flying with another adult. If you are, that is amazing because then you can plan on being on, taking turns, switching, being on and off, watching the your toddler. If you're flying solo, please take care of yourself in the days leading up to your flight and store up as much energy as you possibly can. Okay, as far as the airport stage, this is so important for making sure your toddler sleeps on the plane. First of all, of course, don't let them sleep at the airport. Don't let them sleep on the car ride on the way to the airport and let them spend as little time in the stroller or in the baby carrier as possible when you're at the airport. I often see this parents strolling their toddlers around, their toddlers are chilling in the stroller as they're like leisurely shopping at the airport. This is not what you wanna do at all. Even if it requires a lot of energy on your part, and it does, it's gonna, you're gonna thank yourself for it when you're on the plane itself. So unless you're in a really big rush to get to your gate, let your toddler walk around, run around, follow alongside you while you push the stroller, while you throw your bags into the stroller and essentially just use it as a little trolley. Don't use any of the entertainment, the the toys or the games that you've packed for the airplane at the airport, save them all. Don't let your toddler watch the phone or watch the tablet or any, don't let them sit and do anything relaxing at the airport. Let them run off as much energy as possible. Try to look for an airport playground or play area. A lot of airports have this and have your toddler run around in there. You get the idea. It is exhausting, but this is the best thing to do to um, wear them out and get them nice and sleepy for the plane. And then finally, level three, stage three on the plane on the airplane itself. As you're boarding the airplane, if there are two adults with you, I would recommend that one adult boards the plane and gets your area all set up nice and early because usually most airlines have some kind of family boarding where families can board first. And then the other partner stays with the toddler and runs them around the gate until the last possible minute boarding the plane last. On the plane, your entire job will be to keep your toddler busy, entertained. You really wanna hone in on your toddler give them all of your energy and attention. It's That's your job for the flight. It is exhausting. It is very, very, very much exhausting, I know. Try to stay in tune with them. Try to stay in tune with their sleep cues. And when they start to get sleepy, you wanna put this thing in motion. If you're seeing that they're still not seeming very sleepy, continue trying to get their energy out. Let them walk up and down the aisles if the seatbelt sign is off. Bring them to the airport bathroom. Let them check things out. I try not to be too concerned with germs on travel days. I know that this is kind of controversial. Everyone has their own ideas with this, but I just try to wash my son's hands regularly and let him touch and explore things. 
Once you've decided it's time to get the ball rolling as far as getting your toddler to nap or to sleep, start with some kind of quiet activity. So whether that's coloring or watching a sleepy video on YouTube or reading a book, whatever it might be, start doing that. If it's possible to darken your space, do that. Put the window down, turn off the lights, start talking to them in a hushed, relaxed, calming voice. You might even want to let the flight attendants know that you're going to try to get your toddler to sleep so maybe they won't disturb you with any kind of drink service or anything like that. If you're still breastfeeding, I feel like this is amazing for getting your toddler to sleep. You might have an advantage here, but even if you're just giving them milk, there is, um, there's like structured breastfeeding cover-ups you can use. And I've heard of moms using these on the airplane because it creates kind of like a breathable blackout area on you where your toddler can lay down on your lap and you can give them a bottle or a sippy cup of milk or breastfeeding, whatever it might be. And they have like their own little blackouts space. So that's something I didn't mention in the preparation stage, but is pretty important. Don't let your travel day be the first day that your toddler has ever, ever slept outside of their own bed, outside of a dark room without their sound machine. Practice in the days leading up to your travel, in the weeks leading up to your travel, just having your toddler sleep with a little bit more light and noise, because otherwise I'm just not sure that this will work out if you haven't practiced before the day that you're flying. Mimic your whole bedtime routine, and then just try to hold your toddler in your lap as quietly as possible or have them lay down in their their little toddler bed on the airplane stroke their hair sing to them whatever you would usually do at home if none of these things are working i would suggest rocking your toddler so using either a baby carrier or if you're feeling strong enough just hold them and rock them in the galley of the airplane the most important thing to keep in mind is that you're just attempting something have no expectations imagine that they're not going to sleep actually if they do fall asleep that's wonderful that's great but don't have it in your mind that oh my goodness my my child needs to fall asleep on the airplane the best thing that you can do is just to stay calm and comfort them and at least they have a few moments of peace even if they don't completely fall asleep the more peaceful and calm you are the more likely your baby is or your toddler is to fall asleep thanks for watching guys let me know in the comments down below if you have any tips and tricks for getting your baby to sleep on the airplane I will see you in my next video